Can I do a story? Absolutely. So, and that, I think that was released four days before Valentine's Day. We had the front page of the Weekend Australia magazine, and obviously that was fabulous for business as well. So we've had some, we've had some really sort of lucky experiences. Probably the luckiest experience we had was uh, February 14th in 2007. We'd only been open for three months, and it came uh, February 14th, and someone walked into the store, this sort of short lovely man, and um, he sat down on the couch, and of course the place was heaving with men, you know, sort of purchasing lingerie, it was just, we'd, we'd done a lot of media, my background's PR, Janelle's background is numbers, um, so we sort of carried, sort of, you know, the media off, sort of, you know, what I knew, and I'll talk about that a little bit, just quickly, I, I, I released a lot of press releases, I'm going to sort of divert just, just slightly, we uh, used to, it, I suppose it's just, it's, it's a lesson in adapting, I sent out these press releases which were incredibly newsworthy, I came from a background where I was doing um, press for medical defence unions and GP accreditation companies and all this sort of stuff and um, so it was all about being newsworthy so I'd released this fantastic angle it was perfect timing you know the five W's and the H's the whole bit was there and I never got a run and I was just like I said to you know I'm banging my head up against a brick wall I just don't know what I'm doing wrong here and it would have been I think it was you know three four months of doing this six months I was like I, just, I really can't work this out then I sent some lingerie out to the fashion editors all of a sudden we started getting coverage so, completely different market, you had to learn it very quickly, and once you did, and once you sort of, I suppose, once you got your head around that, and you started courting those journalists, and they actually ended up becoming really good friends. Um, it, it was just, it was, it, it's a completely different industry, fashion retail, um, and it's one, you know, you have a lot of fun in, but you have to learn a lot of lessons. It's very different from any other business that sort of I've ever been involved with. Anyway, so back to um, sort of uh, Mal walking in, he walked in, sat down on the couch that we had in West End. Heaving with men, they're dropping, you know, whatever. We actually had a front page story on Brisbane News that day for Valentine's Day, which was fantastic. And um, I just had a feeling, I had a feeling, he was asking me a few pointed questions, and I know anyone else in business would know when someone's asking you questions, you know when they're interested in, in getting involved in the company. I said to Chanel, this, this guy, you know, there's something, next day he called me, he said, can you send me your business plan? Of course I sent him your business plan. And um, it wasn't, we didn't make the deal straight away. And to be honest, it wasn't, a, you know, a massive deal. We had a lot of, you know, much, much better offers on the table. We had two ladies that sold a fruit market somewhere at Clayfield. They had a million bucks and they wanted to pour it into something. But they said, but we don't want to be associated with the business. And for us, that was just like, oh, well, that's not going to happen. So, you know, and that was big money for us at the time. You know, we're crying ourselves into the shop and then all of a sudden something offers you a million dollars. But we just knew it wasn't going to be right. And we knew that they weren't going to complement the, the skill set that we already had. This particular gentleman absolutely did complement the skill set that we had. So um, we sort of took him on board probably 12 months later. Um, we talked a lot and we sort of did not you know, I don't think to this day we've ever signed a contract or we've really done anything about it, but we just kind of moved ahead, we forged ahead. And it's just been one of the most beneficial relationships I think I've, can, I've ever experienced. His experience, and he was in a sort of a wholesale telco background, started up his own telco company. Um, his experience in wholesale has really added a lot to our business. So I suppose my advice, and I'm not going to give much advice, because I've only been, been in business three years, but if I could get it, give anything, if you're going to take on a partner, don't take them on for money. Take them on for the experience that they can bring to your business. I was very good at marketing. I was very good at visual merchandising. I was very good at selling. Janelle is good at keeping us in the black. So she really does that very well. So I'm very good at spending the money. She is absolutely good at saving it. And she's absolutely good at making sure all the staff are happy, making sure they're paid, making sure the suppliers are paid. You know, all that strategy behind the finance is fabulous. We were just missing that big picture sort of wholesale experience. And that's kind of what he brought to the table. So, and just the negotiating skills of this man. is just, you know, it's, it, it's unbelievable. When you're so involved in your own business and when you're so close to it, as we were with Honey Burdette, I mean, it's very hard to sit down with a leasing agent and they'll say to you, but we don't want toys in our shopping centre. And, and not to get really sort of passionate and a little bit sort of, you know, just to cross the line slightly. With someone like sort of this third business partner, he, he does that very well. And um, it's probably the reason that we're in Westfield today. So we opened the city. Um, obviously we've opened Paddington since then. Uh, and now we sort of, we did the deal with Westfield and that wasn't an easy deal, but it took us sort of quite a, quite some time that we did that deal and um, it's been very successful. I had global leasing managers flying to Australia to have a look at the store. Um, we had our, our Sydney leaks pulled from us twice. 
Um, so we're just about to open in the new Pitt Street development, which is the new Westfield development there. Um, the reason, and I think there's probably a lot of people here tonight thinking, why aren't you opening the high streets? Why are you selling out? You need footfall for retail. It's Unless you're an owner-operator and you're standing in that store, you do need footfall. Um, and it's just made our life a hell of a lot easier. And we've been able to, I suppose, empower so many more women as well. So, I mean, you just, it's sort of when you, we, I, I, we work in our shop. Do you know I was working in the city today? We had a girl sing. I worked in our shop at Chermside on Sunday. I think that's another lesson you've got to. A lot of people said to me, you've got to work on your business, not in it. You've got to work in your business. You really do. Like, it's just so important. I just hear that so much. Work on your business. Get out of your business. You know, you can't, you can't expect to drive, you know, if, if you're working in it. Rubbish. You need to work in your business. You need to be with your staff. You need to have contact with them. You need to know what's going on. You need to know that that light bulb needs to be changed. You know that that's micromanagement. A lot of people can not agree. Um, but at the end of the day, you need to have contact with the day-to-day -day operations of your business. Um, and know what your customers are saying and what they're feeling. And, and, and I think it just adds a whole sort of other motivation factor to your staff as well. Um, speaking of staff, incentive item. <laughs> Incentives are the best thing that we ever did. And, and not scumming incentives, like, oh, you know, shout your dinner every, you know, Thursday night that you make budget. Good incentives. We put good incentives in place, and it saved me a fortune in advertising. Because my staff are actually sort of, you know, they're, they're, they're with the, the customers that walk in the door, they're selling to them. Rather than me having to drive more customers there, they're working with what they've got. And it's just the motivation that it puts behind them. These, I mean, in retail, for example, these girls are on retail wages. They're not the greatest wages in the world, but they're actually making you money. And particularly, I mean, Janelle and I will have our own label in store, which we do at the moment. We we'll say, you sell one of our courses, we'll give you an extra $10. These girls run like machines to sell these corsets. It's just, it's absolutely brilliant in terms of what it does and what it does in terms of the enthusiasm of the, uh, uh, you know, the staff and the business. We take them out for dinner and they just have a great time. They all get on famously and they're all emailing each other. I need three more wee vibes till I make budget today. So, and that's been a really important thing for us. We could have been stingy when it came to staff, but we choose not to be because that's not the sort of culture that we sort of want to create. Um, I just have another quick look. We talked about growing. That's you know, location's obviously pretty important. You don't set up on the corner of Boundary and Vulture Street. Um, I suppose some of the challenges are, just quickly going to wrap up very soon, some of the challenges are not having people to learn from. Um, when we first, as I said, you know, retailers are probably not willing to talk to other retailers and business people sometimes. You know, how's business? Oh, yeah, it's great. Really, they're, you know, sort of, you know, biting their lip. Um, talk to each other. I think that's really important. We had the benefit of a girl that worked next to us at West End in Public Potion. She'd, be there for no, she'd been there for nine years. She was very comfortable with who she was. She really grounded me for a good 12 months. We'd have an extreme cold snap come through Brisbane. And all of a sudden, no one would walk in the store. And I'd just be like, oh, everything I broke, what's going on? And I'd go into her and say, oh, how have you been today? She said, look, it's quiet, it's cold. So give it two days, people will find their jumper, they'll find their wallet and they'll come back shopping. And sure enough, that's what happens. So that's, for me, the psychology behind retail is, is quite exciting. Um, and it's something that we'll probably delve into a little bit sort of, you know, later as we sort of go on down the track, sort of, you know, four or five years. But very interesting psychology behind retail and why people shop and when they shop. Um, so lessons, I'd say risk it. We're very risky personalities, that's why we're in business. You do need to risk it, you need to spend it to make it. Don't cut your advertising budget when things get tight, it should be the last thing you cut. So don't cut your marketing budget when things get tight. Get onto your PR, get out there and sell yourself. That's just so important. That's some things, you know, we don't do everything well, but that's one thing that we do do well is we get out there and we sell ourselves. So, um, and I think that's about it. Work in your business, you know, that's it. Be passionate about what you do. Thank you. Have a special time. Are there any questions? Yes. Why? Because your license tends to run out in 12 months um, and you do forget that your license runs out. So you receive a nasty letter from Germany saying they're going to sue you, $25,000 for using the image over that particular time. We managed to obviously talk our way out of it. Um, you, we also associated the, the business very closely with that particular image. We don't use it at all anymore in our marketing. Um, but for me, I became so passionate about that image and she was Honey Burnett to me that I found it really hard to let go. 
Um, and then I started to see it pop up on book covers. It was very, I was very aware that Getty's images could be uh, quite faceless and we always use images that have sizzle, that have cut through. It's something that, if you're flipping through a magazine, you want something that stops you dead straight. Uh, and that was that particular image. But as people began to find, it was this obscure German photographer that I'd never seen anywhere else. And, um, but as people began to find it, they began to use it. So it could have cost us a lot of money and it was bad for our brand. It could have been associated with other brands. Hi. Look, I think it... Speak louder. Oh, okay, so the question was how do we go... We saw some packaging from China um, and how do we go negotiating with the Chinese. Uh, three, four years ago it was very difficult because we didn't have... We might have had Skype, I didn't know about it. Um, and uh, it was just... I, I suppose back then we... We dealt with our local agents and then we became a little bit smarter and we started dealing with Chinese manufacturers. With the, with the Chinese, you just have to be, we call it Chinglish. You gotta, you, I'm not very good with it, Janelle's pretty good with it. You've got to be short and sweet, one thing at a time. So when you're sort of responding to one of their questions, you want to go back with six different points, but just go back with one. Then they'll come back to you with the next question, you go back.